very much, Purvi, for the kind introduction. And what I'll be giving you, the two sides of the coin. What we have been told till date, even I think Rucha somewhat uh, told in the morning that fat is not enemy for us. Rucha told in the morning. And what other people are saying since long, whenever you go to a doctor or somewhere else, fat is an enemy, fat is an enemy. So let me give you the two sides of the coin, whether fat is an enemy or fat is a friend. My disclosures. Now, what is the fat? Fat is the body's most basic uh, building block. This is the most important thing we have to learn what is fat. The average person is made up of between 15 to 30 percent of the, the fat and yet for decades we are unfairly uh, demonized for the dietary fat. Always the curse is going to the dietary fat. What we are diligently uh, followed is a low fat diet, low fat diet always to reduce the weight and everything. Whether it is correct, dear friends, high refined carbohydrate diet, that is the high carbohydrate and refined carbohydrates, what it does, it increases your insulin resistance. It increases the weight, obesity, type 2 diabetes, several cardiovascular diseases, and several numerous problems. So let us discuss about the fat. It is a Greek word, it is a lipose, and it is the, lipose is the fat. And basically, they are regarded as the organic substances that relatively insoluble in water. So that is the fat. And soluble in organic solvents, potentially related to fatty acids and utilized by your living cells. It is not polymers. Mostly it is small, small molecules. And it constitutes about 15 to 20 percent of your uh, body weight. So what is the function of the fat? I'm giving you the, all the very basic things. What is important thing? We have to learn this thing. It is a source of energy. It is vehicle for fat-soluble vitamins. Very important thing. If you do not have fat, how you, your fat-soluble vitamin will be there for your body? It supports viscera because it is a, it is, it, it is a supportive thing. It uh, gives you the insulation. It is a, I mean, palatability. Your fat is such a nice thing. The moment you think of the fat, it is a palatable. Otherwise, simply taking carbohydrates and proteins, it is not a palatable. So, I mean, some taste and palatability is there. It, re it requires for our growth of the body. A structural integrity in the cell membrane is uh, very, very important. Uh, I mean, the fat is important for that. Decreases the platelet adhesiveness, vascular homeostasis, kidney functions, it is needed for secretion of in the stomach, gastrointestinal motility, lung physiology, all several reproduction, neuronal uh, excitability. I mean, these are the several functions of the fat which is required for our body. And what are the signs? If we are not getting enough fat, that is a quality of fat. I'll be giving you the both, good fat and bad fat. There are two types of fat. So what are the warning signs if you are not getting the good fat? The dry skin, itchy skin, scaling always, flaking, soft, cracked, brittle nails. These are the, all the signs you are getting when you are getting the less quality fat. Hard ear wax, tiny bumps uh, on the backs of your arms and torso. I mean, they are all achy, so you are feeling certain lethargy sort of thing. The higher quality the, uh, quality the fat, the better your body will function. So, I mean, the good quality of fat you need, bad quality of fat we don't need. So, there are certain signs you need good fat. So, but there are other side. It is the most concentrated energy. Rucha told it is a nine calories. So, nine calories per gram, of course, we need, uh, I mean, not the too much of fat. Alcohol, we know it is a seven calories, so fat is the most concentrated uh, source of the energy. So what is the dietary fat, dear friends? Dietary fat is more complex than the sugar. Sugar is more dangerous than the fat, I am telling you. 
So if you see here, there are, I mean, some 250 names for sugar, and sugar is more dangerous than the fat. Do anyone looks good here? See here, so beautiful. I think you are youngsters are so much glued to these particular uh, things, especially the chips. Whenever you get this, uh, you take so much of so much of chips. So what we used to think earlier, for decades and decades, what we were told uh, about the dietary advice is the promise that the high intake of fat causes obesity, your weight will increase, your, you will be diabetes, you will be having so much of cardiovascular disease, and possibly if you are taking too much of fat, you will be having cancers. Fats were our enemy. This was told not only in 1977, even U.S. Senate, the non-medical Senate people, they declared Americans to reduce consumption of total and saturated fat, increase carbohydrate intake, and lower calorie intake. It was actually discussed a lot amongst the Americans at that particular time in 1977. But in 1988, Surgeon General's report also uh, said the similar things that reduces the fat consumption. So it was discussed a lot in the American and everybody thought fats are our enemy. Now, what are the fats in favor of the low fat diet? Low fat and high carbohydrate diet. There were certain, actually studies were done and humans especially preferentially oxidize carbohydrate over a fat, that is a fact a process that helps to maintain the blood glucose within homeostatically uh, control uh, this ranges. So that actually is required that high fat diet sometimes do, uh, does this type of thing. Carbohydrate consumption acutely increases the carbohydrate oxidation with only a quantitatively small uh, uh, increase in doing over lipogenesis. So lipogenesis from point of view, the low fat diet and high carbohydrate diet is okay. I, I mean, fat is also high palatable and may have a weak effect on the satiation. So that is one point in favor of the low fat uh, or high carbohydrate diet. Uh, now, what is the what are the evidences in favor of low fat and high carbohydrate? This is I mean I'll not go into the details, but yes, there are certain evidences. But there are certain evidences in favor of high fat, low carbohydrate diet. And what is that? I'll, uh, I'll give you the, the things. As dietary carbohydrate is replaced by fat, postprandial spikes in the blood concentration of glucose and insulin decreases. That is the mechanism of uh, high fat and low carbohydrate uh, diet. And what Rucha told in the, beautifully in the morning explains everything when she was explaining the ketogenic diet. So what happens in turn? Uh, the insulin uh, decreases, the glucagon secretion increases, and the metabolism shifts to a greater reliance on a fat oxidation. So that is one point in favor of high fat and low carbohydrate diet. So dear friends, there are healthy fats, bad fats and uh, uh, good fats. So there are certain healthy fats and these healthy fats, now you have to change your mindset that every fat or all fats are not bad. In fact, sugar, it is not the fat which makes you fat. And what is the evidence is? It is in front of you. That the high carbohydrate diet causes high blood sugar, high insulin levels, and ultimately increases your fat storage. So when you are taking high carbohydrate diet and refined sugar and too much of sugar, it causes more fat, more weight gain, more fat storage than you are taking the high fat. So low fat diets tend to be the heart unhealthy. Rather, I'm telling you something opposite. That, and evidence is there. It is actually studies published in the dietary, in the, in, uh, uh, in the science. That is the, most respected journal, very recently published in the science, and this actually mechanism that less fat consumption, you tend to eat more starch and sugar, definitely, and it forms a small dense 
cholesterol and you know about the small dense uh, cholesterol which is more atherogenic, more causing myocardial infarction, insulin resistance, more metabolic syndrome and of course uh, type 2 diabetes. So eating fat can make you lean, this what has been told in the morning beautifully, I will not go into the details of that thing. Uh, Rucha told, if you were there in the morning, she told very clearly the ketogenic diet and eating fat can make you lean by, by way of the right fats, increases the fat burning, cut your hunger, reduces the fat storage. So dear friends, the dietary fats, they are our new friends. It, they are not enemy for us and it supports the cell growth, it, increases the energy, I mean these are the good uh, uh, effects of the fat and there are certain, I don't think I'll go beyond that, that pleiotropic effects of the low carbohydrate and high fat diet, published studies clearly said to that, that if I can see here, the substrate oxidation, it is a it is an important thing for substrate oxidation for carbohydrates as well as for the fatty acids. Anabolic signaling in adipose tissues, postprandial oxidative stress, metabolic some, uh, syndrome components like HDL cholesterol increases, your triglycerides reduces, your hepatic fat decreases, coagulopathy decreases and the chronic inflammation reduces by way of reducing the cytokines, inflammatory cytokines. Ketone updates, I mean already been told, uh, again beta hydroxybutyrate uh, signaling, already told, all the things have been told in the morning uh, when she was explaining the ketogenic diet. So fatty acids, so we all know your nutritionists are there, I don't want to go into the details of that. We have three types of fats, saturated fats, monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats and we need all three fats. We don't need a single saturated fats, also we need, we also need MUFA and we also need PUFA. All the three components are very much essential for our body. And I, again, the only thing I want to tell is what are the saturated fatty acids. There is no double bond, mainly it is in the animal fat and the sources are the, most of the cow milk, dairy products palmitic acid and meat, they are the good sources for saturated. For MUFA, it is the, actually it is a single double bond, that's why it is monounsaturated fatty acids and uh, the tea of oil, camilla, olive oil, canola, grapeseed oil, they are a good source for MUFA. And the polyunsaturated PUFA, we have worked a lot, we have presented a lot on PUFA also and there are different types of PUFA, you must be knowing omega-6, omega-3, and omega-9, but most importantly, omega-6 and omega-3 are very, very important. Unfortunately, they are not synthesized in our body. We have to take only from the outside. And it is the ratio which is very important, omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, and 4 is to 1 is the right ratio for our endothelial cells of the body and beta cells of the pancreas. So the ratio is very important. The, if ratio goes beyond 10 is to 1, it is very, very dangerous for our all cells of the body, especially the endothelial cells of the coronary arteries and beta cells. So dear friends, omega-3 fatty acids are very, very important. They are not synthesized in our body. We have to take from outside ALA, EPA and DHA. N6 again are good thing, but we require less omega-6, more of the omega-3 fatty acids. And the important thing is a trans fatty acids. Yes, this is the most dangerous fat for our body, trans fatty acids. Most atherogenic molecule in the world is the trans fatty acids. Please go away, like chips and all these things, trans fatty acids are not good for our cardiovascular health, for our diabetes and obesity. So dear friends, all types of fats are okay. Uh, yes, some fats are unhealthy, because I told you about just now the trans fats, they are very, very inflammatory, and these hydrogenated vegetable oils present in the chips and other things are very dangerous. Some fats are healthy, like I told you, just like omega-3 fatty acids. Two things I want to tell you and I'll end here, that refining, how refining was bad or is bad, it depletes most of your nutrients, it is a source of oxygen-free radicals, 
and more of the trans fatty acids are there when the refining of the fats are there and your size of lipoprotein A decreases, uh, is increases and it decreases the insulin secretion. So refining is not always good. Third, second thing which is very common, you are so many ladies are here and uh, frying food, fry, why the frying food, especially the frying, refrying, they keep something and they refry, refry and they give you the, the hot things. They are very, very bad thing. Why they are bad things? Because uh, the reheat of oil is not good. It is an reuse of oil. Raat ko baj gaya aur subah utke baapis aapne usko upar bana liya. That is very, very bad. So what it does, actually, the grains which remains in the, uh, your uh, oil, and when you reheat and reuse that oil, what happens? It converts into VDP. That is volatile decomposition products. Very, very dangerous. And second, some chemical like acrolein develops. So it is not a good idea. Take in a non-frying uh, uh, that pans and that uh, non-sticky pans. They are good. Don't reheat or reuse of the oil as far as possible because of, and they cause colon irritation. And some studies are there which causes, causes a colon cancer also, which pe pe people are taking too much of these refried and re uh, reheat of the oil is there. Your brain is about 60% of fat. We need good fat for our uh, body. And this is one of the things, uh, study done, and which says that the, the, energy, the different types of fat and the, and the mortality. And if you see here, trans fat is the most dangerous when you are taking and most mortality is by the trans fats, then saturated fats, then monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats are very safe, very good for our body's health. And I'll, want, I'll not go into the details of this, but this again reiterates, and this evidence is that the dietary fats, especially the, the omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 to omega-3 ratios are very, very good for our, not only type 2 diabetes, but also for the hypertension and cardiovascular health. Uh, so some fats are good and some fats are bad. There is consensus and this consensus is there with most of the nutritionists and most of the endocrinologists and diabetologists. That replacement of the saturated fat with naturally occurring unsaturated fat is good idea. Then the industrial produced trans fats are the most harmful substances. The metabolism saturated fat may differ from carbohydrate restricted diets. That is what we have discussed since morning. People with insulin resistant hypersecretion of the insulin glucose intolerance may benefit from a lower carbohydrate and high fat diet. So not all the people, but some people will be benefited with this type of diet. Uh, ketogenic diet I don't want to take. And there are certain controversies. Uh, the controversies are there and there are some controversies are clear, but still certain facts are there. And, uh, because of these controversies, they are actually fat were given the bad name. So to conclude my talk here, very clearly what we have learned in last 15, 20 minutes is the optimal proportion of carbohydrate to fat <coughs> Sorry. in the diet for obesity treatment and chronic, uh, <coughs> all the chronic diseases are very, very important. So it is how to balance the carbohydrate, fats, and proteins. That is the most important thing. That is the design. And what Dr. Nitin Patkar has told very clearly, it is a personalized thing. So it cannot be a generalized thing I can give, uh, nobody can give. Given the enormous human and economic toll of the diet-related disease, high-quality research actually is needed, is still needed for the uh, clearance of certain facts. Uh, of course, current evidence indicates that no specific carbohydrate to fat ratio is the diet is the best. You have to design your carbohydrate to fat according to the persons, the, the persons you are treating, whether patient is normal weight, uh, obese, or the lean weight. So depending on all these things, you have to personalize your fat. So always think of good fat and bad fat. And the ratio is important, I told you, omega-6 to omega-3. Uh, uh, I think I'll not give into the details, but 
uh, the certain oils like mustard oil is the good oil for cooking oil uh, because their ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 is the four is, uh, is 1.5 is to 1, which is less than 4 is to 1, which is the healthier ratio. And your certain uh, sunflower oil and some other oils are having 150 to 160 is to 1 which is not a good thing. So what the nutritionists these days say, go with the modest thing, means moderate path. Blend your oils on a regular basis. That is the best idea. Thank you very much.